First off, let me say that I was the best at everything. Mm. Number one at getting drafted, number one at going to Oklahoma University, number one at... So I never was really tested. Mm. I knew God in a good place. I didn't know him when things didn't go the way I wanted. Oh, wow. Wow. So at, at, at this time in my life, my faith is stronger than it's ever Wow. And it's been tested. I would always ask God when I was in college, like, God, I want to know you this way. And I, and I, want, to, I want to be able to walk into a room and people would really feel the anointing oh, wow. of God coming to this place. And you got to be careful what you ask. That's God. it. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, yes, and, you and, do. And my, my, my whole thing is that no, no means that I am perfect. No means that I am perfect. But every day I have awakened with a, a, a quenching to God, like, what do you desire from me? And, and after losing my wife, uh, my wife went to have a breast reduction uh, in Oklahoma and she was doing it for Valentine's Day, getting ready for our big wedding. We ended wow. up getting married January 1st and uh, something told me I was playing in San Diego and God said, why don't you just marry this woman? And, and everything, you know, when, you, when you're in the, when you're a man and you're going through a relationship, everybody's telling you about what you love. Yeah. And, and, and it kind of makes you drag your feet a little bit, yeah. kind of makes you so... At this particular time, me and God just started spending more and more time together. I was by myself in San Diego. My wife was pregnant in Chicago. And um, uh, I remember her flying down to come visit me in San Diego. And uh, I said, man, let's just get married. Let's go to the courthouse and get married. Wow. And I got married on New Year's. And after that, my wife went to get a breast reduction to, to fit her little dress. And she you know, you know how they, that she wanted to look good. And, and the wedding was in July 8th. And, uh, she calls me, she said, come down to uh, Oklahoma after when we're going to go out, we're going to have a blast. So I'm getting on the plane to go meet her, and I find out that she's, she's unresponsive. And I'm like, how's she unresponsive? It's a breast reduction. She should right. be in and out. Right. She ended up having a brain aneurysm. Wow. And, 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 and at that moment on the plane, I remember taking off on the plane when I got the news to go meet with her. I remember God just saying, do you trust me? Hmm. And in that moment, man, tears began to run down my face and every tear meant something to me. And every, every tear begins to speak to God. Like I remember on my knees asking God that, God, I want to feel you, know you in another way. And, and I wanted, so God said, do you trust me? And every tear made sense. Like don't mm. panic, trust in God. Mm. And from that point, my whole desire in life is to show people to appreciate breath. Wow. And, 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 and at 28, I That's pulled good. a cord on my wife. At 28, I pulled a cord. I had to decide whether she is going to be a vegetable or should she go on. And, and God said, let me handle it. And wow. we decided to do what we had to do. And, and from that point on, I told God from every day of my life, I would show people to show their loved ones, give them the flowers while they could smell it. Yeah. Don't wait till the battle is over. Don't wait till the uh, crying over the casket. But every day we got to realize that we are dying dead. Daily. That's good. And that casket gets closer every day and every day. So my whole thing is just to, to just to encourage all the believers, man, that God is able to do whatever. He's Praise able God. to be Praise exceedingly God. abundant of all. You know, when you Absolutely. haven't been tested, you just hear these words. Right. But when you've gone through something, yeah. Yeah. when you've gone through That's something, it. It, and you know that, not, but, but I'm, I'm here to encourage everybody that in the dark times, we've been made to endure and yeah. endure and, and endure. And I, and I think my message, my message to, to all the men and all the people of God is that we need to know how to prepare for these struggles. We need to be prepared for these things to come. We've been made endure for the night, but your joy yeah. comes in the morning. So that's what it is. I, I'm just, I'm going to keep going and going until the morning comes. I'm going to keep going that's for God. Good. So let me, let's talk about the preparation. You said we need to prepare. What do you think are the best methods of preparation or how do we prepare for the struggles that are inevitable? In this life you shall have tribulation. Yes, sir. We know it's coming. Yes. So how, what, how do you prepare for that? I think preparing is admitting the truth. Mm. And, and you would look at, I was talking to a friend on the way here, I said it's crazy how we would laugh at alcoholics who 
get enough courage to go admit that they're alcoholics. Oh, wow. We will laugh at drug addicts that will admit that they have a drug problem. Mm -hmm. But we're the same people that sit and laugh at these people that struggle with the same situation they're dealing with. And we just have to admitting, admitting God that I'm not what I say I am. Admitting that this ain't what it is. And once you can admit, you can, God can begin to grow those yeah. things. True repentance. That's it. Leads to God's forgiveness. That's it. Yeah, and, and total restoration. Yes, sir. Now, following your wife's passing, uh, you left the NFL. Yes, sir. What prompted you to do that or what made that decision, uh, helped you to come to that decision? Well, I actually, I didn't leave the NFL. It kind of like the doors were locked on me. Okay. okay. And, and when you, I'm so glad that it happened, though. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much. It's painful, but it's necessary. And, and I'm sure. telling you, I'm so serious. Like, I, don't, I, I tell God, whatever you need to do. Thy will be done. Whatever. That's good. That's good. Whatever. If That's I got to lose again, if this, in That's order good. to do what you need in my life, God, I didn't even pick my name, my skin color. You Lord. put me here, God. Yes, sir. I didn't get to do any of it. So whatever yes, you do in my life, you get to do it. When I said the, the locker room, when I said the NFL kind of locked me out, mm. I wanted to build something for men that you cannot retire from, a locker room that you can never mm. retire from. And, and this is something I feel like needs to be in all cities, that men can get a Tuesday and all come and meet from all religions, all, all things. Mm. Oh, coming to an understanding of what God wants from us. Yeah. And, and a lot of times you'll hear like at man conference, I'll have friends that's Muslim that want to go, but it's in the church and they don't. And you're like, these little things are cutting you off from seeing who God is. Oh, so I, I built this that's platform good. that whoever comes, but I know it's in me. Yeah. And, yeah. and I built it. We can have it in an aquarium. We can have it wherever y'all want it to that's be. Good. The church is in me. Oh, that's it. That's oh, it. Oh, I just want to tell all the believers, that's like Pastor Smokey said, that Christ came and he died. And that every day you wake up, that you keep that on your mind, that the price is already paid. And every day of your life is a gift. It is a gift. Tomorrow may never come. So what you do today matters. If, if you've gone through grief, I ask myself this question. Do I, God didn't put me in that casket with my wife. So there's something that he has to do still in me while I'm here. And I want to tell everybody that if, if you've gone through a struggle, if you've gone through anything, just trust and know that God is able. Yes, he is. He, he is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we can ask of him. That nothing in this world is personal. It's all a part of God's kingdom business. And if you're in the kingdom, God, you say your will be done, and then we leave it there. And you don't try to figure it out, or, but this ain't happening. You trust and know when you put your money where your mouth is, and you allow your feet to line up with your words, trusting that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above. Yes. And that's the faith. You take faith and you throw it, and you say, God, do it. Take it. And, and I'm telling you, when we can take this thing and throw it to God, yeah. He does, he, he does wonders with it. And, and that's it. Just tell him those that never give up. Constantly trust God. And, and I want to tell everybody, really, like, as you see your chest moving, and as you feel the breath coming out your body, just know that at every moment, God didn't have to put it back. He didn't have to put it. So, so let's, not, let's not waste our breathing on, on telling people off or complaining or, or, or uh, when we breathe, make it count. Make it yeah. personal, yeah. purposeful. Uh, when I go home at night and I get in an argument like we all do in relationships and different things to fix it before it, it ends. And, and, and you just have a way of, you take it one day at a time, a day at a time, a day at a time, and God continues to show up. And I promise you, he'll make a way. Praise God. Come on, let's praise God.